Hello everybody, welcome back. And last week's video, we said about how the king of Moabites was continuing to force Balaam into him cursing the Israelites, or Teb, wanting him to curse the Israelites. And we know the king of Moab is Balak. And Balak, we understand what he was trying to do. But this is a very good example for us to understand that Satan, our adversary, will try to influence us every single time against us to do against God. So we can understand that Balaam, or Balak, sorry, sends his high messengers and officials to Balaam to say he is ready to do anything for him. And this point got me ringing about a point that in the Jesus um, time period, in the first advent, where Jesus Christ is in the wilderness, we understand after the 40 days, Satan starts to approach him. He, he knows that he is, Jesus Christ is weak, weak in flesh hungry and after 40 days he is fasting of his after due to the after of 40 days of fasting so we can read about what saturn tries to do to jesus christ in this period when jesus christ is hungry and as we can flesh so let's read it where it says in matthew 4th chapter 8 to 11th verse again the devil took the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory and said to him, all these will, I will give you to if you fall down and worship me. So we can understand that what he's trying to do here. He is trying to basically uh, influence him to worship him and not God. So Saturn keeps on influencing Jesus Christ. But then Jesus Christ said to him, then Jesus said to him, be gone, Saturn, for it is written, you shall not worship you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering him. So we can understand how Saturn, if you read the verses before, starts with him to use two rocks to make bread or food for himself. He tells him, you have all this power. Out of these two rocks, make bread. But Jesus Christ stays strong and does not get influenced like Saturn, which is his main goal. But Saturn does not give up since he continuously tries to uh deceive us and defeat us or like defeat him basically he's trying to defeat him and he, in the end he goes to the huge extreme of giving them almost this whole world but jesus christ sees humble enough and tells him what he should what the truth is and who the real almighty is and satan him and we can understand from this, Saturn understood that he could not deceive Jesus Christ because he was so strong in the faith between God and him. So we understand how Jesus Christ stayed strong. So in the same stage, Saturn, we can understand, will never give up deceiving us. And he will continuously trying to defeat us or take us. And our Christ is the example that we should not, how to glorify God and not Saturn. We should stay strong in the faith and we should understand what the Bible has said and not what the Saturn, the influencer who goes against God, says. So this is what we're trying to say. So he, Saturn, in the end, we can see he tries to give everything towards Jesus Christ. But we understand as a good example what Jesus Christ does. We understand Jesus Christ says, no, he does not want anything. As in the Bible, it says the only true um, king himself is God. And in Balaam's case, it's sort of the same thing. Balak is trying to get Balaam to curse the all Israelites. And he's saying he'll give you anything for him to do this. So now we can read about what it says about Balaam. And we're going to read from 18th verse in Numbers 22 chapter. Okay, here we go. So... Where is the verse? Balaam answered to and to the servants of Balak, Balak, though Balak were to give me his house full of silver and gold, I could not go beyond the command of the Lord, so of the Lord, my God, to do less or more. So you understand here. And we can read he says here, we know like what last week we read about, where he says a good reply about saying even if God Balaam, God Balaam gave anything in the world to him, like it says in this verse, he cannot go against God. But then he puts a comma and stops this conversation and says, wait for tonight and I will talk to God. So slowly Balaam gets influenced, we can see, which we made a conclusion of last week. And let's read about that in the 19th verse. It says, so you two please stay here tonight that I may know what more the Lord will say to me. 
so we can see what happened in one night will change the way Balaam is. And we can read and carry on Balaam the way he gets changed. So that night we can see, and God came to Balaam on the night at at night and said to him if the men have come to call you rise and go with them but only do what i tell you it says here so he says only do what i do okay but if they if they call and he says if the men have come to call you uh, but only do what i tell you if sorry if the men have come to call you, rise and go with them. So he's saying, if the, they have called you, rise and go with them. But whatever I say, you must do. So Balaam rose in the 21st says it says, Balaam rose in the morning and saddled his donkey and went with the prince of Moab. Princes of Moab. But God's anger was ki kindled, kindled because he went and the angel of the Lord took his stand in the way as his adversary. Now he was riding on the donkey, and his two servants were with him. So here we can understand it's a bit of a strange thing, because God was the one. He's God is angry with him because he, God, he asked God what he should do, and he told him to go, and he told him to do as what he says. But then why is God angry at Bala? When we read the 22nd chapter, what did Balaam do wrong? We can clearly see what God, he does sort of what Bala, God says. God says, he says, we need to clearly understand that you can, he says, sorry, um, you must do what I do. And he says, you can go. We can clearly say he told him to go. But then why is God angry in the 22nd verse? In the 22nd chapter, why is God angry at Balaam? What did Balaam do? Well, we will look at that next week. So I hope you understood today's very interesting video about Balaam and his story. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a very interesting topic about who Balaam is and what the interesting wrong thing he had done. We understand that after God told him in that night, he, God tells him what he should do. He told him to go, but follow what he does. God, Balaam does that and he goes on the donkeys and with the people. But then God says an, sends an angel to, for, to, as an adversary towards Balaam. Why? We will learn next week. But what we need to think about is why God was angry, which we'll also learn next week. So I hope you understood today's video and see you next time. Bye!